Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers superpower relations and the Cold War 1941-1991 to from the GCSE Ed Excel 9-1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. You can now become a member to support me to continue to make this content. You'll get exclusive access to worksheets, revision materials and you'll get to vote on forthcoming episodes. Just click on the join button below this video. Hey guys, last time we were looking at the conferences between the Grand Alliance and how the Alliance was strained right from the beginning. Today we're going to be taking a look at how that relationship broke down and led to the beginning of the Cold War. You will remember that on the second day of the Potsdam Conference, the USA dropped the first atomic bomb on Nagasaki in Japan. Then, three days later, they dropped a second on the city of Hiroshima. The bomb had the power of 12,000 tons of TNT and killed over 120,000 Japanese civilians. The use of the atomic bomb changed everything for the USA and the USSR. Truman felt more confident in the Potsdam negotiations and hoped it would intimidate Stalin and ensure Stalin's cooperation with the USA. Stalin, on the other hand, hand responded in the exact opposite way to which Truman had hoped. He was afraid the USA would use the bomb to control communism and therefore was even more determined to create a buffer zone to protect the USSR. He had already ordered scientists in the USSR to begin developing their own atomic bomb and they tested their first successful bomb on the 29th of August 1949. All the atomic bombs had achieved were to escalate the mistrust and tensions between the two nations. However, in the longer term it did make both sides reluctant to enter into a hot war. They instead entered into an arms race. Britain, meanwhile, was quietly bowing out as a major player in the world. The war had economically bankrupted them and the empire was collapsing. Attlee, therefore, needed to focus on the internal problems of Britain and did not want to get drawn into the tensions between the USA and the USSR. The bomb meant that he and other European nations felt more confident in placing themselves under the protection of the USA. The situation continued to deteriorate into 1946 and the lack of trust from both nations became clear with the sending of two telegrams. The first, sent in February 1946, became known as the Long Telegram and was sent by George Kennan, who was working at the US Embassy in Moscow. In the telegram, he gave a rundown of what his view of the Soviet Union was and how he saw the relationship between the USA and the USSR. Kennan made it clear that he did not believe peace between the two nations was possible. He saw the Soviet Union as aggressive and suspicious and informed them that the Soviet Union were building up their military. He reported that the Soviet Union saw capitalism as a direct threat which needed to be destroyed. However, he did think that the Soviet Union would back down if they were faced with strong opposition. The content of the telegram greatly influenced Truman's policies towards the Soviet Union. The Soviets responded in a similar way, partly in retaliation for this and mostly because Stalin wished to know the same information about the USA. The Novikov telegram sent in September 1946 by Nikolai Novikov, who was the Soviet ambassador in Washington. In his telegram, he told Stalin that the USA wanted to use military power to dominate the world. He said that the USA were no longer willing to cooperate with the USSR and he did believe that if the USA were to start a war with the USSR, the American people would support it. The Novikov telegram convinced Stalin that he was right not to trust the West. The consequences of the atomic bomb were many and far-reaching. In the first instance, the USA's bombs sped up the USSR's atomic program, allowing them to get their first bomb to work by the end of 19. It also meant the war between the two superpowers was in fact less likely. Following the bombs on Japan and particularly Hiroshima, the short and longer term effects of the bomb were becoming increasingly apparent. Both sides were aware of the Japanese civilians who were dying days later from radiation poisoning and neither wanted to see that in their own country. The consequences of the telegrams were more subtle but no less important. Both telegrams massively increased tensions. For both sides, the telegrams confirmed what they already believed that their counterpart was not to be trusted. The American government decided that based on the information in the long telegram, they should adopt a policy of containment, aiming to contain the spread of communism. The USSR, on the other hand, based on the information in the Novikov telegram, sped up the development of the atomic bomb in the Soviet Union and caused the USSR to build up their military to defend against the USA. Okay, that is everything you need to know about the use of the atomic bomb and the long and Novikov telegrams. Don't forget to check out my website for worksheets and revision guidance and I will see you next time.